Hey guys, just want to do this quick video for you, explaining a little bit about solar rooftops, and what, what opportunities are out there, what solar rock, rooftops really mean, and, and what you need to do if you're looking at getting a solar rooftop. So, basically there's, there's four options out there with regards to solar rooftops. You can install a solar rooftop on your house for self-consumption, number one. Number two, you, could, you can install a solar rooftop uh, on your house and you can get a feed-in tariff from the PEA, or the utility. The third, you can install a hybrid system so that you're connected to the grid where you've got a full set of battery backup for emergencies and also any excess PV that you generate during the daytime can be pushed into the battery um, so that you can use the batteries in the evenings as well. Um, and then the fourth option, which we don't really go into, is totally off-grid systems because they get complicated, they need a lot of management, a lot of maintenance, and they're not for the everyday um, person, even myself, most probably I wouldn't go totally off-grid unless it's some sort of a bug out situation. So uh, there we go. So basically what you've got is, when we talk about self-consumption is that you, the, the, the government right now, the utility, which is the MEA in, in Bangkok or the PEA, which is in the provinces, they allow you to install a solar rooftop on your house. You can install a solar rooftop for your own self-consumption. There's a zero export policy, so you cannot push that energy back into the grid and get paid for it. Um, that's on the second scheme, which I'll talk about in a minute. So the first scheme is really for self-consumption. So the idea with self-consumption is you you need to calculate what your daytime usage is. Um, and we, we will do that for you anyway. We'll help you out with that anyway. But a general rule of thumb is you could look at, say, saving one third of your electricity bill. So we would say, okay, if your electricity bill was 6,000 baht a month, we could look at saving around two to 2,500 baht per month. And for that sort of saving, you would need a five kilowatt system. This is a general, general sort of rule of thumb that we work on when we're sort of first starting out and talking to a customer. So um, what's the restrictions? There, there's no restrictions. You've got single phase, you've got three phase. If you've got, if you've got 10,000 baht a month in self-consumption, then you can, put a ten, you, know, you can put on a system that takes care of that, that full 10,000 baht a month. But it all has to be calculated because what you don't want to do is you don't want to overproduce. You don't want to put a 10 kilowatt system on your roof if you only need five kilowatt system because it's just a waste of energy. Um, that, that's obviously being said. I mean, putting on a system for self-consumption is really quite simple. Basically, it depends on the roof type and, and I'll go into a solar survey in a minute, but basically, so that's, that's the first one is self-consumption. We need to calculate it right, right. We don't want to overproduce because we can't push anything back into the grid. And when we install a system for self-consumption, we need to put in a smart meter, which basically stops the energy going back into the grid. Um, and that's basically, you know, that, that complies with the zero export policy that's in place right now. There is something that's really, um, we say, um, uh, a little bit depending on the project you're in as well. In Thailand, what we find is there's a few Mubans, a few private projects out there and you're receiving your bill directly, your utility bill directly from the developer. If that's the case and you have um, an analog meter, and as long as your developer agrees, you could then overproduce and push your meter backwards and you could be saving extra energy like that. But it all depends on a project by project basis. And if you're doing any calculations with regards to the ROI, which is your return on the investment, I wouldn't calculate that benefit in to your calculations because things could change at any time. The developer could hand the project over to the government and basically all of a sudden, you know, your, your electricity bill is not from the developer anymore, it's from the PEA, then the zero export is enforced and then you, you know, you can't feed it back into the grid and now you've got 10 kilowatts on your roof when you only need five. So you have to be very careful with, with those sort of situations. Um, the second situation is taking um, a feed-in tariff. So basically, you would install solar rooftop on your roof. Um, any excess, you could feed it back into the grid and you get paid for that. The restrictions are that if you've got single phase, it's five kilowatts. And if you've got three phase, it's 10 kilowatts. This is the maximum, this is all you can do. Um, the feed-in tariff right now is about 1.68. Um, it may have gone up a little bit, but basically that's what you're getting per unit. And to apply for the for this program is it's it's quite complicated. There's quite a lot of um, quite a lot of uh, rules in place as well. So that's that's what you've got for that uh, system there. The third option, as we said, was hybrid. So installing a hybrid system 
is is something that is going to be coming more and more, you know, into into force in the future. I mean, Australia is very very big using the the alpha hybrid systems that we install, but. You know, I would say that right now, for the most people, the hybrid system is still very, very expensive. And if you're not in a situation where you're in the middle of nowhere or on an island like Samui, or you're in the middle of nowhere and you really need to have your power on constantly, then the hybrid system maybe is a little bit more expensive than, than you're willing to sort of pay right now. Trying to calculate um, ROI on a hybrid system, just forget it, because you're, you're way out of the ballpark, right? With the standard grid type system for self-consumption, you're looking around five, six years, uh, something like that. But with the hybrid system, it'll be 12 plus because it's very complicated to calculate that ROI. Um, so that's the hybrid system. I said going off grid is the fourth option, but we're not talking about grid, going off grid right now with that. Um, so there's your, there's your three options really, is self-consumption, self-consumption, or actually should I say PEFEA, feed-in tariff rate and basically you've got the hybrid system. We're finding most of our installs, I'd say 90% of our installs we're doing are all for self-consumption. So what do we do with self-consumption? When we talk to a customer, we will ideally set up, um, we'll set up a solar survey. So we'll go round to, the, round, round to the customer's house, and the first thing we do is we have a consultation, we talk a little bit about what their energy needs are, and then we'll take it on to the next step where we do a solar survey. Sometimes what happens is the customer might say, okay, my bill's 4,000 baht a month, you know, and I'm not here during the daytime. So really, you know, solar just doesn't work for them, right? It has to work for you. What we're finding is if it's generally like a lot of expats living in Thailand, they've got like a three bedroom house with a pool villa, they're using a little bit of aircon during the daytime, washing, refrigerators, um, those sort of things. And typically a five kilowatt system is, is good and five kilowatt system can save you up to 2,500 baht per month. So that's what we, we generally go in and we talk about the, the overall energy saving with the customer. That's what we, we do, when we do, the, um, when we do the consultation. And quite often I'll do this consultation with the client either through messenger or through email because sometimes, or even just pick up the phone because sometimes it just doesn't make sense. If between us we think that it does make sense and we want to push forward with it and the customer would like us to prepare a proposal and a quotation for them, then what we need to do is we need to find out is um, what is their supply, is it single phase or three phase? Um, we need full billing from them for maybe three months to see how much their electricity bill is. We need to look at their roof type as well. Is it a flat roof, is it a pitched roof, tiled, what sort of tiles as well? Because depending on the tile, the standard CPAC tile, which you see everywhere, the wavy one, that's CPAC, that's standard everywhere. But sometimes you've got these really flat tiles and we need to modify and make a special solar bracket for that. So that becomes a little bit more complicated and pushes the cost up a little bit as well. So that's it, we go and do a solar service. So we check the roof, we check to see, if, have a look at the structure of the roof as well um, to make sure it can support uh, the solar PV modules. Solar PV modules pretty much we calculate at around 22 kilograms per square meter. So we have to we have to really calculate that when we're doing the drawings. But basically, it's not it's not an issue anyway. Um, that's it. It's really such a simple system. Basically, we do the solar survey within within 48 hours. We'll we'll have a quote to the customer and we'll talk to the customer about the system and then we can go ahead and install it. A typical five kilowatt system takes about two no more than three days to install up and running and done. Um, you can monitor the system yourself on an app. Uh, we also have it on our portal in our office as well, so we can keep an eye on the systems for the client. Um, all of our installations that we do, we, we include a two-year O&M contract with that. So that means that we would come out every six months, clean the panels, um, check all the cables, check all the wiring, um, basically check the inverter, just make sure everything's working properly. Um, and then after the two year period, the client can take another two year O&M or they can pay it time by time. So that's up to them. So hopefully you've got something out of this today. Um, if you've got any further questions, please drop me a message below or send me an email to uh, info at and I'll be happy to, to chat with you about anything that you need further. Have a good day. Cheers, bye.